investigating velocity and distance. When you're in motion, what are some clues that let you know how fast you're moving? Think about it when you're in the car. Okay, if you're not the person driving, you're going to see the road going by you <clears throat> and you're passing it during a certain amount of time. If you're the driver, a clue that of how fast you're going is by looking at what? The speedometer, right? So car speedometers use the same two factors that scientists used to determine speed. These are distance and time. Okay, hint, you may also see the term displacement when talking about distance. <clears throat> we'll get to that more in a little bit. Distance is a measure of length. We usually use meters, kilometers, or centimeters as our units of measurement for length. You'll see for the most part, we use meters per second for, or we use meters, meters per second for uh, velocity. But, and here we have, if you're gonna do centimeters to meters, it's multiplied by 100. If you're gonna do meters to kilometers, it's multiplied by 1,000. Conversely, kilometers to meters divide by 1,000, or meters to centimeters divide by 100. Displacement is the change in position of an object from one <clears throat> from its starting point to its end point. Okay, so this is much different than distance. Um, and I'll explain more. I'll, I'll explain more about that later on in, in in the review in class. Time is a measurement of of the interval between events. Okay, we usually use seconds, hours, or minutes as units of measurement. You see here, seconds to minutes is divided by 60. Minutes to hours divide by 60. Hours to minutes multiply by 60. Or minutes to seconds multiply by 60. In this unit, the term velocity is used to mean speed. Okay, speed does not require a direction. Velocity does. So there is a difference between the two, even though they use the same formula. Okay, when we're talking about velocity, velocity is the distance that something travels during a specific time interval in a specific direction. Speed has nothing to do with the direction. Okay, so example of speed, most highways in Manitoba have a speed limit of 100 kilometers an hour. In town, it's half that, it's 50 kilometers an hour. It has nothing to do with the direction, right? Whereas an example of velocity, when you're travel, this would be an example, you're traveling west on the Trans-Canada at 110 kilometers an hour. So in other words, it would be written like it, it says down there at the bottom, 110 kilometers an hour. And then in the brackets, it would be uh, W for west, right? If it was north, N, east, E, right, or south, uh, S. Uh, all explanations of velocity include units. Kilometers per hour, K kilometers per minute, meters per second. As long as the description of velocity includes units of distance over time, you can get a fairly good idea of how fast something is going. Super important in physics. Units are so important, okay? If you don't put the correct units, your teacher is not going to know what you're trying to what you're trying to say. Okay. So an example: a car traveling west on the Trans Canada, 110 kilometers an hour, right? That we were talking about before. You're asked to convert meters per second uh, to, to, to meters per second. So you need to divide by 3.6. So this is how you do it. You use 3.6. So you take the 110 kilometers per hour, and you divide that by 3.6 and you end up getting 30.56 meters per second. Okay, so that's how you're gonna do that. Um, you'll have this as well. Okay, I'll be giving you a formula, a physics formula sheet, and it'll have all these useful conversions on it. Um, these will be required and useful for the test, um, for quick reference for assignments, um, and, for, uh, and for conversions. Okay, so now I'm going to get you to do some quick math with me. 1 billion, 80 million, divide by 3.6. Pause if you need to as we're going through. Okay, this is the speed of light, okay, which is 30,000 meters per second. A jumbo jet cruising speed, 913, divide by 3.6, okay, 253.61 meters per second. A cheetah runs at 115 kilometers per hour. 
divide by 3.6, okay, that gives us 31.94 meters per second. A northern pike or a jackfish, okay, going at 50 kilometers per hour, divide by 3.6, 13.89 meters per second. The hawk moth at 53 kilometers per hour, divide by 3.6, gives you 14.72 meters per second. A human traveling at 45 kilometers per hour divided by 3.6 gives you 12.5 meters per second. And finally, a garden slug at 0 0.05 kilometers per hour divided by 3.6 gives you 0 0.0138 or 0 0.014 meters per second. Radar guns calculate velocity almost instantly. The radar gun has a laser beam and an internal calculator that calculate the velocity of a moving vehicle, okay, uh, that cops use. You can calculate velocity using this, this simple formula, okay? Velocity is equal to the distance divided by the time or distance over time, or V is equal to D over T, okay? So where distance is kilometers or meters, Time is hours or seconds. Velocity is then kilometers per hour, meters per second. Remember that any of those can change depending on what is being calculated. Okay, if you're given centimeters and for a distance and, um, and seconds or centimeters and minutes, it doesn't matter. It's just that these are the most common ones here. So when you calculate the distance of an object, when you calculate the distance an object has traveled and the time it has taken to cover the distance, you can use division to calculate the object's average speed over a time period. Okay, so we use this triangle to help us to understand. Okay, so the velocity formula can be altered. So velocity, speed, it doesn't remember, it doesn't matter. Uh, they're essentially they're the exact same equation. It's just the velocity has to do with the distance. Uh, sorry, direction. Pardon me. And so, if you take your hand or thumb or whatever is big enough to cover up velocity, we have distance over time, right? And so, velocity is equal to distance over time. Now, if you want to find uh, the the time for something. Okay, if, if you have the velocity and you have the distance and you're trying to find the time it took, you're going to take the time, put, put your hand or your finger or your thumb or whatever it is over time, and you have distance over velocity. Okay, so that's the equation you would use. If you're trying to find distance, we have velocity times time. So if you cover up distance, you'll notice velocity and time are beside each other. That means they're multiplied by each other. Okay, that, that's how we use the triangle. Step one, list the information. So this is when doing any physics calculation, okay? Any physics. So if you ever are like, oh, crap, I forget all the steps, go back to Friesen's notes here um, in calculating uh, velocity, and the steps are listed here. So, and you'll, you'll see I go through it in class, but um, but this is an, it's important to know. So list the information given in the problem. So what is... Uh, what is given? What do you know? Okay, so place each piece of information beside the symbol that represents it. So, for example, for let's say time, you would put or t, you put you put t in and five seconds. Okay, for a question. Step two, okay, put a question mark down beside the item that requires uh, that that you're supposed to find what you're trying to find out. That way, you have all your information and you have what you need to find out. Okay, step three, write the formula down. Okay, step four, substitute the known values for the formula. And step five, make the calculation. Okay, so in this, uh, in this video right here, in this, well, I'll let it go.
Okay, sample problem. A cue ball is on a pool table, travels two meters towards the eight ball. If it takes one second for the cue ball to reach the eight ball, how fast is it moving in meters per second? First of all, the first thing we need to figure out, right? What, what do we know? What do we know from this question? We know, um, first of all, a distance. We know two meters, okay? So what do we know? The ball is traveling two meters, okay, is the distance. Um, we also know it's going, it's doing that over one second. So going distance is two meters, the time is one second, okay? So what do we want to find out? How fast the ball is moving, okay, uh, is what we're trying to find out. So this is our velocity. So again, we would write down on the side of the on the side of the form, we'd write down d is equal to two meters, which is distance. T is equal to one second, right, or time. And velocity is what we're trying to find out. Then we need to find out our formula. Okay. So again, if you need to cover up the v, it's d over t, right? Velocity is equal to distance over time. Okay. Or v over t. V is equal to d over t. Now we need to substitute the known values in the formula. Okay, so we take that D, which is 2, and that T, which is 1, and we take, so D is equal to V over T, or 2 over 1, which is 2 meters per second towards the 8 ball. So our answer would be 2 meters per second towards the 8 ball. A snowboarder makes it down a 1,000 meter run in 60 seconds. What is her velocity? Okay, we know distance and time. Okay, so we're going to write them down. We use distance. We use v is equal to d over t. So that's one thousand over sixty, or uh, sixteen point six seven meters per second, is is the velocity the that she goes. In physics, we calculate velocity in meters per second unless otherwise stated. This means that you need to convert units before you do calculations. Very important. Okay, there are a thousand meters in a kilometer. There are a hundred centimeters in a meter. There are 60 minutes in an hour, and there are 60 seconds in one minute.